Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff coming at ya. I'm guessing the Torch DIY straightened valves worked. Um, let me turn the music down here. Still dealing with a uh, crazy surging idle um, and a wicked exhaust manifold leak, but that could be because that snapped and that one snapped. And I reused the old um, exhaust manifold gasket. I just ended up spraying it down with copper spray gasket, which sometimes work. Obviously, it didn't really work out in this case. But considering the fact, I think all turned out pretty well. Um, I did test uh, the compression. I have 160 across all cylinders. And the only reason I did that was because when I first put it all back together, I had no spark whatsoever, thought everything was jacked, thought that it didn't work and stuff. So I'm um, going to run down some things that um, screwed me up and stuff in, in hopes that it didn't screw you up. Okay, so when you're doing your head gasket or your timing belt, right, you really got to pay attention to the timing marks. Okay, I don't know. Let me see if I can get down in here. Somewhere on here says the word up, and it's not going to focus in. Okay, that says up, and then there are two cams on the sides. Those are your balance shaft, or where your balance shaft belt goes. They have markings that go to either front and back of the engine. And then obviously there's your crank with your timing notch and everything like that. You got to make sure those are all matched up, okay? So you go ahead, do that, put your timing belt on and stuff, okay? Then what you want to do is you want to roll this thing over to top dead center on the number one on the compression stroke. And you do that and you'll have it done correctly if that says up, the crank then you'll find your crank you have uh, notches down there and a timing mark. So if that says up and your crank notch lines up with the indicator on the timing cover, then you should be good to go until you come over here when you go to stab the distributor in, okay? Working with V8s, I have been out 180 degrees countless times, but you always have some type of spark. You're either backfiring out the carb and stuff, running super, super rough, missing on a whole bunch of cylinders, but you have spark. These Hondas, no, you don't. So I was 180 out on the distributor. I had zero spark. Thought I had dead cylinders, couldn't figure it out whatsoever, but just had to, you know, take the valve cover off again, took my timing cover off, and that's why the top timing cover is still off, and just verified everything again. I, you know, got all my markings to where they were supposed to be. Number one cylinder on top dead center. Verified that all my markings were good. Came back here, pulled my cap off, realized wasn't pointing at the number one on the cap. So I was 180 out. Turned it and yeah, fired right up. Funny story, when I put that distributor in, I was having a lot of troubles the first time and I really just fucking gave her the what if. And turns out there's two little tangs that run the distributor into the cam sprocket. Well, a fella snapped one of those tangs right off. So I don't know how long that distributor is going to last for. I will be hitting the wreckers here soon enough or Rock Auto looking for a replacement. Um, but it starts and drives. Um, yeah, I got a new belt on down there. Uh, another issue, there's a bolt. I don't know if you can. Okay, see that bolt right there? Okay, well make sure the belt is on the bottom of that. When I put my belt on, it was actually riding on the top of that. And when I tightened up my alternator and stuff, when I first fired this thing up, it was like I was burning rubber in here. And I uh, quickly shut it off and realized that I was on the back side of that bolt and trying to kill my brand new Prestone belt there. Uh, yeah, so you know what? There you have it, guys. Uh, don't always have to do the most expensive things. You know, we just need to get these cars up and running. So I had a bad... Um, timing belt went on the car. 
blue bent the valves on the number three cylinder the intake side um if you would have brought this to a shop they would have redone the head well a they would have told you not to do anything with this card's junk so you'd be looking for a new car but you know anywhere from 12 to 1600 dollars, i'm sure to re and re a head and all new parts and stuff like that literally all i have into this is an alternator belt from Rock Auto, which was under $10. Um, what else did I get? The head gasket. You can see a little bit of the blue right down there. That was under $30 at Rock Auto. And yeah, I think that's all new. Oh, no, I lied. Um, so one of the spark plugs got damaged. So a fella did the right thing and just bought one spark plug. And when I was taking off this PCV valve, I broke it. So I had to get one of those and I changed out the oil filter. So one oil filter, one PCV valve, one spark plug, one alternator belt, one head gasket, torch the valve straight. And I just, I put some new clamps on and stuff like that. Made myself a new ground cable and it goes to two different spots because I was having a no start issue. Starts up fine. So very cheap solutions for expensive problems it's covid time and my car is running again i don't have to borrow the shop truck anymore anyways guys like share subscribe i hope this video finds you well hopefully maybe this will give you some encouragement to get out there get to that rusty piece of junk either at the end of your driveway stuck in your alley or in your garage that yeah you know what it may take a lot of time and effort but the parts may be cheap or possibly even free and get out and get those cars running again. There is no excuse to not have them running. Take care, guys.